So welcome everybody. We're here to work on the breaststroke today. Really looking forward to sharing with you my insights into this beautiful and sometimes challenging stroke. I started out my competitive swimming career as a breaststroker and it was a stroke that I really liked to do the best. But although I swam it relatively fast, I developed some neck and back issues. And it was as a result of those neck and back issues that I actually ended up going to the Alexander Technique. So I have a lot to be grateful for for learning breaststroke. The issue was, in order to become very streamlined and faster for the water, I developed a kind of hunch. I'd do this. And I think the combination of the hunching together with tension into my neck and back created some spinal problems. And I had a condition when I was young called trigeminal neuralgia which was a really bad pain in my jaw. And that problem later went away, but I think that the root of it was racing and putting my neck and back under this amount of strain. Um, there's a number of things I really like about breaststroke, the way that we swim it. It creates a wave action, so it's really good for mobilizing the spine. Every vertebrae gets a really good workout. Um, it's really good for strengthening the muscles of the lower body because breaststroke is rear wheel drive. So the power and the energy in, in the legs, so this is really beneficial. Particularly if you've been swimming front crawl, it's a good complement because front crawl is front wheel drive and breaststroke is rear wheel drive. The other thing that I really like about breaststroke is it gives you this long wave action, a long glide. And when you're gliding through the water, it's very meditative. So a lot of people feel a lot of quietness when they swim breaststroke a lot. So they say in the martial arts, to learn a new movement, it requires at least a hundred repetitions, but to relearn an old movement, it requires a thousand. So if you've always doing, been doing breaststroke in a particular way, which is an ingrained habit, it will take a time to change it. So working on land can be really helpful for that. The first step is to learn how to create the undulation. So breaststroke is a wave action, and the undulation is generated by the movement of the eyes. So when I look down, the body moves in a downward trajectory and then I'll tilt my head forward and it'll come forward and then I'll open my arms. So the first movement we call praying to Neptune. And it's where I feel the wave and I feel the water supporting me and I'm using the direction coming through my eyes into my hands. Can you imagine that your eyes are a remote control and that your hands don't open until you can see them? Start by stepping forward, then I'm going to bow my head, I'm going to reach down and extend my arm. So. at the hands, then you look forward over the top of them, they open. Hold it for one, two, three, four, five. So to replicate the feeling that I get from the bottom of the wave to the middle of the wave, I can simulate this movement standing up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my arms from the middle of the wave to the top of the wave and I'm going to adjust my head position and I'm going to really feel the connection from the sides of my body, similar to the way that we did when we practiced the front crawl. So, shoulders relaxed, eyes looking forward, weight evenly distributed, hands come into the praying to Neptune, and I'm going to extend three quarters. Now I look up, hold it one, two, three, four, Five, turn my hands flat, relax and come down. One, two, three, four, five. I really get a lovely sense of extension of the sides of my body a feeling of length through my front of my neck and it feels really comfortable. Yeah, 
of the arms float up. That's far enough. Now, gently change the positioning of the head, holding it one, two, three, four, five. Change the head position, change the hands flat, and come down. Good, one more time. So here, slowly tilt the head. Good, and really feel the length, yeah? You feel it? There. So if you're reaching, 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 and turn, and go back. So one more time together, really long. Dive down. I'm looking above my hands, at my thumbs. I look forward to eye level. I hold it for a few seconds. I stand up. It's important that you don't bury the head too much, but it's also important that you don't pull the head back. So the head is leading the movement, but in the continuation of the spine. Forward and down, float up, stop. Forward and down, float up, stop. Forward and down, float up, stop. Bottom of the wave, middle of the wave, Stop. Bottom of the wave, middle of the wave, stop. Bottom of the wave, middle of the wave, stop. So it's a question of tilting the head rather than pulling it back. So here, I want you to step forward with this foot, bow the head, roll the neck gently, Open the arms and reach. Good. Hold it for one, two, three, four, five seconds. Relax and come down. Bottom, up. So this knee has got a nice bend in it and the knee is over the foot. Okay, so one more time, left one. Here. Bow, yes. Look up. Look forward. One, two, three, four, five. Turn the hand flat and come up. We go with the right leg first. Dive, forward, turn, up. Left leg, get ready. Dive, forward, float, up. Bottom, middle, stop. This upright practice really helps you to get a sense of the balancing effect of the arms, but also how the propulsive movement of the arms brings the body up without the need to shorten the neck. It also really reinforces the wave action and also the correct timing, the relationship between the arms and the legs and breaststroke, which is for a lot of people a bit of a challenge. The next movement, that we're going to work on is a scooping action of the arms. So what we've learned is a non-propulsive arm action in the direction of the eyes. Now we're going to learn how to bring the body up. And the main purpose of the arms in breaststroke is to create some forward momentum but more lift. We're going to lift in a way that doesn't involve shortening the neck. So I've gone to the bottom of the wave, I float to the middle of the wave and then I scoop and that scooping action brings my body up. See how it rounds, shoulders down, neck long. So I'm at the bottom of the wave, I'm at the middle of the wave, I scoop and I'm leaving my neck alone. What you don't want to do is pull the head back. You want to maintain the integrity of the spine. With the breaststroke arms, there's some magical connection between the breathing and the positioning of the arms. 
What I've discovered is when my hands turn inwards and t come up, palms up, the air comes in very, very naturally. It fills up, invites the air in. When the hands, are fa the palms are facing downward, it feels much more difficult to breathe. So there's something about turning the hands here that creates a feeling of lift and openness across the chest. So what we want to avoid is coming in like that. So we turn the hands over, that angle opens my chest and allows the air to come in in a much more natural way. Down, open, the air comes in. In meditation, we often sit with our hands, with our palms facing up. And this is to encourage a natural in-breath, an open shoulder. So it's exactly the same in breathwork. If the palms are facing up at the point of the air coming in, it's much easier, much more natural. If the palms are facing down, it's more difficult. So you, a nice exercise is to go, breathe in, breathe out. Allow the air in, press the air out. Allow the air in, press the air out. Allow the air in, press the air out. The action of turning my arms out helps me to create lift and re remain loose in my shoulders. If I don't turn the arms out, as I scoop, I'm more likely to raise the shoulders and this isn't good for my head-neck-back relationship. So by going down, turning to the sides, I can lift and keep my neck long and my shoulders in neutral, which creates a much easier way to breathe in. So I'm breathing out on one, breathing out on two, and allowing the air to come in on three. The arms always remain in front of the body. What we need to understand is that the arms are primarily there for lift, not for pulling yourself forward. So I go forward and down, I open, I scoop. If I pull my arms behind my body, this narrows my shoulder braids, narrows my back and makes breathing much more difficult. So I go forward and down, I open and I scoop and that gives me lift. Forward and down, open, I scoop and that brings my face out of the water. So my hands are in front of my chest. If I bring my hands behind my back, this limits me. It makes it much more difficult to get my body up and over the water without tensing my neck. So bottom, middle, and create lift here with the arms. Bottom of the wave, middle of the wave, top. Breathe out, breathe out, allow the air in. Breathe out, breathe out, allow the air in. It's sometimes difficult for people to coordinate the leg action together with the arms. In order to make it easier for you, I'm gonna demonstrate the leg action without the arms and then we'll put it together. So I'm gonna be stepping from the bottom of the wave to the middle of the wave to the top of the wave. So watch my feet in relationship to the rest of my body. Start with both feet together with the weight evenly spread. Step forward with the lead foot, keeping both feet on the floor. Shift your weight forward onto your front foot and raise the back heel off the ground. Now bring both feet together and step up. Bottom of the wave, middle, top. Bottom, middle, top. Bottom, middle, top. I step down, go up, feet together. I step down, up, feet together. Step down, up, feet together. I step down, look forward, 
feet together. I step down, forward, feet together. Bottom of the wave, middle of the wave, top. Left leg, tiptoes, feet together. Right leg, tiptoes, feet together. Up, together. So now we're gonna combine the stepping action together with the arm action. So, let's do it together. Leading with our right. Down, float up, feet together. Left, float up, feet together. Right, float up, feet together. Breathe out, breathe out, allow the air in. Breathe out, breathe out, allow the air in. Breathe out, breathe out, allow the air in. Great. So keep up the practice, ideally with a partner, and remember that habits are like tall trees and comfortable beds, easy to get into, but hard to climb out of. So the more that you keep consolidating the movements, both in your mind and in your movements, the easier it will be for you when you get back into the water. And join me tomorrow, where we're going to move on to the next stage, which is about understanding a movement that I call the breast to fly. <laughs>